The world continues to believe that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network is weak. About 30 days ago, an island owned by a Seacan nation was invaded and occupied by a foreign power. I am Echo 3, and let's continue discussing the Cold War. Margaret Kerman intends to show the world that she and her country are not weak. Already, forces have been dispatched in an effort to retake the island. Some skirmishes have already taken place, including the damaging of one enemy submarine. But there is one main airport on the island, and it must be neutralized in order to prevent the enemy from using its heavy aircraft. So, flying halfway across Kerbin, this Vulcan bomber is attempting to drop its 24 bombs on the runway in order to disrupt operations there. Even with refueling, this is about as far a mission as the Royal Air Force is capable of performing. Bombs away. How much can a single bomber actually accomplish in this conflict? With the 24 bombs dropped, one of them has actually hit the runway. This will make operations for the enemy more difficult. This also demonstrates to the invaders that the Royal Air Force is capable of hitting anywhere in their home country. Because of this raid, it is likely that the enemy will have to pull back much of their air power and keep it closer to their capital. Hopefully, this will make the job of the Royal Navy and Marines a whole lot easier in retaking the island. After the long flight, Black Buck 1 returns home. History will not soon forget this mission. However, there is much left to be done to retake the island. Already, the battle for the island's airspace is commencing. The enemy is using the Mirage 3 to patrol the skies. These are a very capable aircraft that have proven themselves in the Yom Kerbin War. Facing off against them, the Royal Navy has their Sea Harriers. The Mirages will perform best in high-altitude, high-speed engagements. The Sea Harriers, on the other hand, are better at low-altitude, slower engagements. And it appears, for some reason, the Mirages have decided to start this engagement on terms that favor the Sea Harriers. The aircraft are about 10 kilometers apart and closing fast. The Harriers will need to be careful as the island is fortified with anti-aircraft guns. And the Mirages too will need to be careful as they will not have a lot of fuel for this engagement. The Harriers fire Sidewinders at the lead Mirage. The missiles explode close to the aircraft and damage it slightly. The Mirage is not out of the fight, but in dodging, it's not able to get its own missile lock back on the Sea Harrier. The Harriers fire another missile, and again, the Mirage is able to avoid significant damage. But it is not able to avoid the last incoming missile. One Mirage is down. Both Sea Harriers move in to engage the second Mirage and the second one is also hit and taken out of the fight. The enemy will certainly think twice before trying to engage the aircraft of the Royal Navy. The joint program to develop the Harrier aircraft has certainly proven its worth today. And while the enemy has lost a couple mirages, they are far from defeated. As this air battle is taking place, a naval engagement is happening as well. A submarine from the Royal Navy has been tracking an enemy cruiser. The order has finally been given for the submarine to attack the cruiser. The submarine launched two torpedoes, and within an hour, the cruiser had sunk. But the threat to the Royal Navy still persists. The enemy still possesses powerful, air-launched anti-ship missiles. A lone destroyer, acting as a picket for the rest of the fleet, has been targeted by the enemy. Its radars are searching medium and high altitude for incoming missiles. It hasn't spotted the aircraft coming in low over the waves. The destroyer is there to keep an eye out for enemy aircraft and missiles. But ironically, it hasn't spotted the enemy aircraft armed with an anti-ship missile. It has only been a few days since the cruiser was sunk, and now the enemy wants revenge. The enemy has already been reduced to only flying cargo flights at night. But the enemy has no intentions of giving up the island. This aircraft is armed with a powerful anti-ship missile developed by Seacan. The enemy aircraft has locked on to the large radar signature of the destroyer. And now, the aircraft fires its Exocet missile. The plane quickly turns around to head to the mainland, while the missile streaks towards the ship. 
the Royal Navy hasn't lost a ship in combat since the Great Conflict against the Fascists. The missile has closed the distance and strikes a midship. This is a real shooting war, and both sides need to come to terms with that reality. Diplomacy alone will not resolve this conflict. This is a war, and the one with troops on the island will be the one who controls it. Elsewhere, the Central Kerbin Alliance Network has begun the development program for a new type of tank. Seacan's older M60 tank would have many shortcomings if it ever faced off against the communist newer T-64 tank. So for years now, a replacement program has studied newer technologies to incorporate into this new design. In the end, a couple different designs were submitted, and this is the one that won the bid. Several major advancements have come in both armor and ammunition. On the protection side, the newer Chobum armor is being fitted to this tank. While well, the exact composition of the armor is classified, it uses a combination of steel plates, ceramics, special bonding material, and specifically calculated gaps between the layers. At this time, another material is also being considered to be incorporated into the armor, and that is depleted uranium. The extreme hardness and density of the material makes it good for armor and also good as a penetrator for ammunition, which Besides armor, this tank is also being fitted with the latest in cannon design. The earliest prototypes for this tank used a 105mm cannon. However, a couple other nations in the Central Kerbin Alliance network are shifting their tanks over to using a 120mm cannon. So when the second round of production for this tank comes around, it will also use the 120mm cannon as well. The new cannon, combined with the newer types of ammunition, should be able to defeat any type of tank the communists are currently fielding. This, combined with the new armor, should make this tank a formidable match against anything the communists have currently developed. It seems that the world perceives the Central Kerbin Alliance network as weak. The communists are invading their neighbor to the south, and one CKEN member is already engaged in a conflict over one of their islands. The Central Kerbin Alliance network must remain vigilant. It seems that a larger conflict could happen at any moment. Will the war in the Middle East grow larger? Or will one of the other conflicts grow larger and drag the rest of Seacan in with it? What are the odds of communist tanks barreling down on Seacan forces? It's hard to say exactly what the chances of that would be. However, it doesn't look likely that world peace will suddenly break out. That is why the Central Kerbin Alliance Network is developing this new XM-1 tank. Its armor and cannon have already been highlighted. However, it has a few other advancements that have been made as well. The turret and track suspension have been designed with stability in mind. Unlike its predecessors, this tank is able to shoot while moving. The unique stabilization system on this tank basically lets the gunner lock onto a target and shoot at it even while the tank is moving. Combined with the tank's fast reverse speed, it is capable of shoot and scoot maneuvers. That makes this tank potent in both the offensive and defensive roles. And this is just one of the newer types of tanks being developed by the Central Kerbin Alliance Network. Other members are incorporating the same newer technology into their designs as well. While other designs were considered and had much of the same technologies, this particular model was chosen mostly because of its power plant and its cool looking headlights. Well, probably not because of the headlights. But the Seacan armies are going green. This is an entirely electric powered tank. Combined with solar energy, that would give this tank nearly infinite range. It also means that should the need arise, this tank is capable of fighting on other planets and moons. But currently, the biggest threat is the communists, and they reside on Kerbin. The AI driver and weapons manager are well protected, along with the ammo stored inside the hall. It is speculated that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network takes ammo storage a lot more seriously than the communists. With the final sensors incorporated into the tank, it is time to take it out for a test drive. This is certainly one of the fastest tanks that the Central Kerbin Alliance Network has ever developed. 
On pavement, this tank is capable of reaching speeds almost 30 meters per second. For the Americans watching, that's close to 60 miles per hour. Even off-road or over difficult terrain, the tank still handles well. Invisibility from the driver's hatch is pretty good as well. The driver is also capable of seeing what the gunner sees. As the tank approaches this intersection, it's time for a demonstration of what its gun is capable of doing. The gunner is able to line up with a target and stay basically locked on even while the tank is moving. Hopefully, this test demonstration will thoroughly impress the brass at the Central Crobat Alliance Network and they will want to order as many as possible. Just look at that. The gun is able to stay on target even while the tank moves. But that's not all. As night closes in, that's no problem for this tank. This piece of armor is equipped with the latest in night vision technology. And not just for the gunner, but for the driver as well. While it's unknown exactly how advanced the communist tanks are, it is not believed that they are capable of performing nighttime operations like this new Seacan tank is. With the communists and much of the world perceiving the Central Croban Alliance network as weak, the Alliance must be prepared. It doesn't feel like it'll be long before the communist or some other nation drags the rest of Seacan into a much larger conflict. But the armies of Seacan will be ready for it. I am Echo 3, and thanks for joining me on this discussion about the Cold War. I will see you next time.